Okay, well, I think we should start going then. So welcome back to day two of this GMT UNAVCO course. Um, you know what the deal is going to be now. It's going to be very similar to yesterday. We'll have uh, me saying a few things right now, and I don't need 10 minutes, so we'll save some of that for Dong Dong, who's going to go over the seismology uh, aspect of, uh, of this project um, and of this course. And that's going to take us through the first 90 minutes. And then we'll have the usual one hour break for breakfast, lunch, tea, bedtime, whatever you do there. And then I think because Don is giving this from China, he will be in bed after that break. <laughs> so the rest of us will try to handle any questions that might come up during uh, the seismology section. And if we are incapable of doing this, which could happen, then I'm sure Don will clean up tomorrow morning <laughs> any, any remaining questions that we couldn't handle. And then we're going to switch gear and uh, talk more about geodesy uh, related uh, plotting that Eric uh, Zhu is going to do for us. And that's going to be sort of the bulk of the start of the second uh, half, if you will, although they're not equal halves. And then after the break, uh, we'll do some animation with GMT that I'm going to do. And that's going to be the end of day two. So, um, after we have these first two days, uh, the third day tomorrow, we will start talking about and working on the class projects, the individual project that you have to complete and submit to get credit for having taken the course. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow morning. But um, I hope everybody have a good time so far. Everything is running relatively smoothly. Again, if there's some specific complicated issue that we aren't able to show on Slack, uh, uh, solve on Slack, please post a GitHub uh, issue on the GMT for Geodesy uh, GitHub page so we can sort of track and work with you maybe offline on and on any problems. Okay, so with that, I think I'll save five minutes extra for Dong Dong and uh, let him take it away. Dong Dong. And I'll stop. Hi, um, yeah, hi, I'm Dong Dong um, uh, because uh, it's in China and so it's close to 11 p.m. And because I have very unstable network um, while share, share screen. So I record a video uh, one or two days ago and I will let uh, Melissa play this video. And okay. Uh, Melissa, can you play this video? Let me share the screen here. Let me find yeah. it. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, thank you. I will admit people will come late, uh, Melissa, you can just do the video. Okay, <laughs> thanks. All right, do you see the black screen? Yeah. All right. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Dong Dong Tian from China University of Geosciences. The topic of this session is GMT for seismology. So let's first go into the seismology folder. Seismologists use uh, seismic waveform to study how earthquake happens, how seismic waves propagate through the earth, and also seismic structure inside the earth. The seismology community actually uses GMT a lot. We use GMT, the plot module, to plot lines and symbols, the coast module to plot the coast lines, and the, the, like the grid image module to plot topography relays. In addition to these core modules, GMT also provides four modules that are highly related to seismology research. Here is a summary figure for the four modules. The first module is called MECA. MECA can be used to plot uh, focal mechanism of earthquakes on a 2D map. And the COPE module can be used to plot focal mechanisms on a cross-section. So like if, if the cross-section is vertical, then the y-axis is the depth. The POLO module can be used to plot the uh, first motion priority of the observations. And the seismologists uh, use these observations then can uh, determine the focal mechanisms of the earthquake. 
The second module can be used to start a five-meter wheel bomb. So it's a vehicle and in that format. Because this is a workshop for geology, so we will only focus on the first two modules, Mecca and the Cove. In this session, I will show you how to use Mecca and the Cove to plot focal mechanism or beach balls on a 2D map or a cross-section view. Before we start, actually, we have to understand, have a very basic understanding uh, of focal mechanism and the beach balls. Here is a um, video made by Iris. This short video actually give, uh, gives a very good introduction to focal, man focal mechanisms and the beach balls. Uh, I don't think I can explain them better than this video. So let's just uh, watch this video first to make sure that you understand focal mechanisms and the beach balls before we start to before we start to learn the mechanical modules. When an earthquake occurs, seismologists create graphics of focal mechanisms, informally referred to as beach angles, to show the faulty motions that produce the earthquake. The focal mechanisms are based on the direction of the first arriving P wave. Let's investigate the patterns of P wave arrivals that result from different faulty mechanisms by first considering a strike slip earthquake. When an earthquake occurs, seismic waves radiate away from the epicenter in all directions. The parallel green lines in the northwest and southeast quadrants have been compressed during the earthquake, and the northeast and southwest quadrants were stretched. Let's look at the P waves moving away from the epicenter. We will insert slinkies to demonstrate and exaggerate the compression and dilatation features. Northwest and southeast of the epicenter, the rock is compressed, and the first arriving P waves at those stations are pushed away from the epicenter. Northeast and southwest of the epicenter, the rock is stretched, and the first P waves are pulled toward the epicenter. The dilatational and compressional arrivals are often shown as plus and minus signs, respectively. With observations from many stations, we see two quadrants of compressional arrivals and two quadrants of dilatational arrivals, separated by perpendicular nodal planes. To simplify the illustration, compressional quadrants can be shaded, and dilatational quadrants are left unshaded, producing a P-wave first motion pattern that looks like a beach ball. Notice that this pattern of dilatations and compressions can be produced either by right lateral strike slip faulting on a north south fault plane or left lateral strike slip faulting on an east west fault plane. Therefore, you must use geological knowledge of the region to decide which nodal plane is the fault plane. For example, if an earthquake with an epicenter on the San Andreas fault had a focal mechanism that looked like this. The most likely choice would be that the fault plane is oriented northwest to southeast, parallel to the strike of the fault we observe at the surface. Now let's consider a right lateral strike slip earthquake on the Kane fracture zone in the Atlantic. This earthquake will produce compression in the northeast and southwest quadrants and dilatation in the northwest and southeast quadrants. Since there are no nearby seismometers, the P wave first arrival patterns are observed at distant stations. Seismic energy travels away from the earthquake in all directions, so we need to consider the three dimensional geometry of the ray paths. To do this, it is convenient to imagine a sphere, called the focal sphere, surrounding the earthquake hypocenter. Rays that travel to distant stations will radiate from the earthquake to the lower hemisphere of the focal sphere. To keep things simple, Let's look at two cross sections at more or less right angles. First, take a vertical cut into the earth through the hypocenter in a northeast southwest orientation. P waves leaving the earthquake and traveling to Lima, Peru in the southwest quadrant or to Madrid, Spain in the northeast quadrant will have compressional first arriving P waves that push up away from the earthquake and are observed as an initial upward vertical motion on the seismogram. The second cross section will show P waves traveling to Detroit and Seattle in the northwest quadrant and to Cape Town, South Africa in the southeast quadrant. 
these will have dilatational first stranding Q waves that are pulled toward the earthquake, observed as a downward earth motion on their seismograms. By examining first arriving Q waves at many stations over a range of azimuths and distances from the earthquake, we can determine the pattern of compressions and dilatations on the lower hemisphere of the focal sphere. As we have seen, a strike slip earthquake produces a crossing pattern of approximately vertical faults or nodal planes that separate two compressional and two dilatational quadrants. Now let's look at the pattern of compressions and dilatations that result from an earthquake on a normal fault, like on the east side of Steens Mountains in the Basin and Range Province. The block on the east side of this fault has dropped down with respect to the block on the west. Viewed in cross section, we see that compressional first arriving P waves will radiate to the east and west from the hypocenter at shallow and intermediate downward angles. The rotational first arriving P waves leave the hypocenter at a steep downward angle. The resulting focal mechanism has perpendicular nodal planes that cut the lower hemisphere of the focal sphere in an orange slice appearance with compressions on the outside and dilatations in the center. This is the focal mechanism signature of an earthquake on a normal fault produced by extensional forces. Because of the way the fault plane intersects the bottom of the focal sphere, the boundary between the regions on the focal mechanism is curved. Finally, let's consider a thrust fault, like that beneath Sierra Pie de Paulo within Sierras Pampeanas of Northwest Argentina. This is a west virgin thrust fault, wherein the block on the east moves up and over the block on the west. Viewed in cross section, we will see that dilatational first arriving P waves radiate to the east and the west from the hypocenter at shallow and intermediate downward angles. Whereas the compressional first arriving P waves leave the hypocenter at steep downward angles. The resulting focal mechanism has perpendicular nodal planes with the same orange slice appearance observed for a normal fault. However, for a thrust fault earthquake, dilatations are on the outside and compressions are in the center. This cat's eye focal mechanism is the signature of an earthquake on a thrust fault produced by compressional tectonic forces. Okay, let's go back to this GitHub page. Um, here are three main types of uh, faults, uh, strike slip fault, normal fault, and the reverse fault. As you can see, earthquakes happening on these different types of faults have very different focal mechanisms. And uh, their beach faults are also very different. So from beach faults, we can then know the orientation of the fault and also the slip direction of the fault. After the brief introduction to focal mechanisms and the pitch balls, now it's time for us to learn how to use Meta and Coke. To use these two modules, we first need some example data. Here are the example data we are going to use in the following tutorial. This data has three lines. Each line represents a focal mechanism of one earthquake. Um, the data has eight columns. The first three columns are the location of the earthquake, longitude, latitude, and depth. The next three columns are the focal mechanism information. In this conversion, we use the strike, sweep, and break uh, to describe the focal mechanism. These three parameters are all angles in degrees. And uh, the next column is the uh, magnitude of the earthquake, as to how large the earthquake is. And the last column is the title of the event. Uh, it's just a string um, to describe what the earthquake is. Now let's copy the example data and uh, save it to a new text file. Uh, we will use this file in our following uh, scripts. So let's copy these three lines and uh, open VS Code. Let's create a new file and uh, save it here. And uh, let's save it. We can call it 
make a dot dat. We also need to create a new file for our test script and uh, let's save it. And call it visual dot sh. Like any GMT command, GMT batch script, uh, this script should start with GMT begin. And uh, then we also need to give the name of the image. So let's call it visual pitch balls. And it should end with GMT and the show. In this part, we are going to use the uh, uh, Mecca module to plot pitch balls on 2D Max. So let's type GMT Mecca. And uh, we need to pass the example data to this module. So let's type mecca.bat. Let's save it and run the script to see what happens. Flash pitchfall dot sh. You don't see any figure and uh, you will see an error in your terminal. The error says that you must specify the minus s option. So what's the meaning of the minus s option? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, so I need to read the official documentation of the Mecca module. So in the terminal, I can type GMT docs Mecca. This command will open the documentation for the Mecca module. Let's type enter. And uh, this is the documentation for the Mecca module. You can see that there are many options here. And here is a minus s option. Let's click this link. You can see that the minus s option actually selects the meaning of the column in the data file. It means that uh, we need to tell Mecca what's the data format in for the input data. That's because Football maximums can be specified in many different ways. Uh, we already call it many call it, uh, conventions. So focal maximums, there are many conventions to specify focal mechanisms. So like um, GMT actually support many different conventions. Minus SA, minus SC, minus SM, SD, SD, or minus ST. There are many. And uh, let's look at, at minus, minus SA. Minus SA means that the focal mechanisms are specified in Archie and Richard convention. So in this convention, the first three columns are the longitude, the latitude, and the depth of the earthquake. And the next three columns are the strike deep rate of the of the bottom movement. They are all in degrees. And uh, the next column is the magnitude, how large the earthquake is. And the uh, minus SC means that focal maximums are given in global CMD convention. In this convention, the, the, we need to provide the strike speed rate of the first node plane. And also, we also need to provide the strike deep rate of the second node plane. Another very commonly used convention is or the seismic movement tensor. It's also a very general way to specify focal mechanisms. Uh, a seismic movement tensor is just a three by three tensor. It's similar, or it's the same as, it's very similar to the stress tensor or the strain tensor. Uh, it's by three by three, so there are nine components. But because, uh, because the movement tensor is symmetric, they are only six independent components. In this convention, we need to provide the longitude, latitude, and depth of, of the earthquake. After that, we need to provide the six components, MRR, MTT, MTFF, uh, MRT, MRS, and the MTF of the, of the tens. So um, um, in, this, uh, in this session, we, our example data actually follow the IK and Richard convention. So, we will use minus st here. So after telling that Mecca, we are using the RK and the Richard convection. We also need to specify the size of the beach ball. So let's use one centimeter. So uh, let's draw the strip again. 
bitcoin.sh. You should see a pick like this one. So there are three bitcoins here, but they are clicked. That's because um that's that's because uh we are plotting bitcoins on maps, but we don't give the region projection and the frame settings for this figure. So let's go back to the script. And uh, before the GMP my command, let's let's plot the bitmap. So GMP bitmap. And uh, minus here because this is a ge geographic map, so we need to uh, geographic projection like Mercator projection, and the size of the image is ten centimeter, ten centimeter, and uh, we are we want to have a automatic uh, frame, so minus B A A F. And uh, we also need to give the region of the, the study of the region of the map. So minus R. If we go back to the example data, we can see the uh, locations of the earthquakes, the longitude and the latitude of the earthquake. So based on the this information, we can set a study region to one ten and uh, one twenty, and the longitude is. Uh, 30 to 35. So let's save it and run a script. Okay, now you should get, you should see a fake like this one. Using this simple make command and uh, the minus s option, we can now plot beach balls on maps. Um, by default, all the beach balls are plotted at the locations of the earthquake. Uh, the compressional part and uh, black. And the extensional parts are white. The title of the events are plotted above the beach balls. We can change all of them. If you look at it, look at it, the beach balls carefully, you will see that the beach ball size are different. That's because the one centimeter here uh, is the beach ball size for a magnitude of five earthquake. The real beach ball size is proportional to the magnitude. So for, for example, for this strike sleep event, uh, its magnitude is four. So the bit ball size is a little smaller. And for this normal fault uh, earthquake, the, its magnitude is six. So its uh, bit ball size is larger. If you want to, to plot all the bit balls uh, using the same size, you can simply um, append plus M to the minus s option. Let's see what happens. So you can see that now all the beach balls have the same size. Okay, I will remove plus m and then we go back to the original uh, example and then run it again. Um, so we can also change the uh, change the properties of the titles. Um, we can change its angle, we can change the font uh, the size and uh, also the position. Uh, this can be done by adding more modifiers to the plus uh, minus s option. So we can use plus a um, to change the angle of the of the titles. A means angle, and uh, we can use plus a thirty, which means rotate the titles by thirty degrees. So this is a new title. And we can also change the font by using plus f, f means font. And uh, we want to a small size, so we can use a uh, six point size for the text. And uh, um, I want a blue title, so I use blue. And uh, let's draw the script. So the title is now is smaller and has a blue color. Uh, we can use plus here to into the, the title at other locations. By default, it's uh, above the beach ball, so it's uh, top and top center, PC. And uh, I want to put the titles below the beach ball, so I can use bottom center instead. So now the title are at the bottom of the beach balls. I can also add some uh, more offsets to the titles by using um, class O 
and uh, uh, I will give a zero for the two of that in x direction and also the z point uh, centimeter in the y direction. And uh, this is the final data. Melissa, I think your sound has to be on for us to be able to hear. Zero point. Oh. And uh, so we can change. Uh, could you please rewind just 30 seconds so we can um, catch that part? Here. We'll remove class M and then we'll go back to the original uh, example and then write again. Um, so we can also change the, uh, change the properties of the titles. Um, we can change the angle, we can change the font the size and uh, also the position. Uh, this can be done by adding more modifiers to the plus uh, minus s option. So we can use plus a um, to change the angle of the of the titles. A means angle, and uh, we can use plus a 30, which means rotate the titles by 30 degrees. So this is the new title. And uh, we can also change the form by using plus s, s means font. And uh, we want to a small size, so we can use a uh, six point size for the text. And uh, um, I want a blue title, so I use blue. And uh, let's draw the script. So the title is now is smaller and has a blue color. Uh, we can use plus here to put the look, the, Title at other locations. By default, it's uh, above the fish ball, so it's uh, top and top center, TC. And uh, I want to put the titles below the fish ball so I can use bottom center instead. So now the title are at the bottom of the fish balls. It's ball, I can also add some uh, more offsets to the titles by using um, class two. And uh, uh, I will give a zero for the two of that in x direction and also the a z point uh, centimeter in the y direction. And uh, this is the final data. Sometimes uh, you probably do not want to see the titles because maybe you have too many uh, aspects and uh, too many beach balls. If there are too many titles, then the data will be very messy. So it's very simple. You can simply change the font size to zero point. And uh, so we can change the six point to zero point. Then the title will disappear. Okay, so the title just did disappear. Okay, so this is, uh, these are the modifiers that can be used to control the appearance of the titles. Okay, I will remove this one and uh, go back to the initial uh, original example. Um, because um, most earthquakes happen along a fault, so usually you will have many earthquakes in a small regions, um, and they may overlap each other. In this case, you may want to offset your beach balls to another place. Uh, so that you can still see the location of the beach ball, or locations of the earthquakes, and also can see their uh, beach, uh, can see their focal mechanisms. This can be done by adding two more uh, columns to your input data. So let's go back to our example data, max.dat. Um, we can add the the, the, the location, new location for the beach balls to before the title of the event. Uh, for example, for this strike sleep event, uh, the location of the earthquake is here. And uh, now I want to plot, uh, I want to plot the beach ball here. Now I want to plot the beach ball here. So the location of this point is um, 111131. So this is the location of the beach ball. And for other events, I don't want to have any upsets for them. So I can simply use zero and zero for the reverse spot. 
and uh, zero zero for the normal fault. Here, zero zero means that um, no offset for this pitch fault. So let's run the script again. Bash pitch fault dot sh. Nothing happens. Uh, there are the strike slip. Uh, there are no offset for the strike slip. Strike slip events. That's because we still need to provide the minus a option to make the offset happen. So let's run the script again. So you will see that this is the location of the earthquake. This is this is the location of the earthquake, and the, now the bridge point is offset to a new location here. And let's go back to the example data. We can also change the reverse spot. Uh, let's say I want to uh, plot the beach ball here. So here, so the uh, new location should be 114 and uh, 34. And for this number four, I want to plot it, plot it here. Then the location is uh, 117 and uh, 31. Okay, let's save this example data and run the script again. Bash pitchfall.sh. You will see that all the earthquakes are uh, offset into uh, different locations. Um, so this line connecting the original location of the earthquake and uh, the new location of the beach balls. We can change the change the pen of the baseline by using plus p and uh, no plus p plus p and uh, we can use a uh, set of pen um, thickness to zero point five point and uh, use a uh, red color red color. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that. Okay, and I will use a thicker line, one point. Okay, you can see the line is much thicker now. And uh, it's also possible to plot a circle here at the original location of the earthquake. This can be done by adding plus S. And uh, I want to have a circle with a, a size of 0 0.4 centimeters. Let's see what happens. Okay, the now the fish ball, the number the circle is too large. Okay, I will change it to 0 0.2 maybe. Okay, so this is the final figure. And the, now from this figure, we know the location of the earthquake, and uh, we also can uh, easily see the focal mechanism of the earthquakes. Okay, as I will remove the minus a option here and still go back to the uh, original example, and uh, let, let's run the script again. Um, by default, the compressional part are black and the extensional part are uh, white. We can change the color of these two bars by using minus G and minus E. So minus G controls the color of the compressional part. We can use a color like red. And uh, so we have a red pitch ball, and uh, we can also use a minus E, um, which controls the uh, color of the extensional part. I can use uh, another color like light blue. Okay, so we can use minus G and the minus E to change the color of the uh, extensional and the conversional parts. Okay, now, now let's remove the minus J and the minus E option and uh, go back to the original example. Let's run the script, script again. And so this is the original image. Um, from the CV image, we, know, we can know the locations of the earthquakes. Uh, we can know the focal mechanism of the earthquakes based on the beach balls. We can also know their magnitude Mm, based on the based on the size of the beach balls, but what's still missing is the depth information of these earthquakes. So how can we also show depth information uh, of these earthquakes on this map? Uh, this is usually done by painting the compressional part by different colors, 
and then the color is determined by the depth of a uh, earthquake. Um, in the Mecca module, this can be done by uh, using the minus C option. The minus C option means that we need to prov provide a CT file which maps the depth of the earthquake to a color. And uh, then uh, Mecca will use the color to paint the compressional part. So using minus C here means that we need to provide a CPD first. So before running the GMT Mecca command, we need to uh, make a CPD file. So we can run GMT make CPD. And uh, then we need to choose a master CPD. There are many CPD CPTs in GMT, and uh, I, I will choose uh, minus C and then use the size CPD. We also need to give the uh, minimum and the maximum value in this file uh, using minus T. Uh, let's go back to the, our original example data. So this, the third column is the depth of the earthquakes. So these three earthquakes have a depth of 15, 25, and uh, 45. So the minimum, we can give a minimum value uh, of zero, and uh, we can set a maximum value, maximum depth to 15. I think these two values make sense. So we can use minus T, zero, and uh, the maximum to is um, 50. Uh, so let's run the script again. Now we can see that the three beach balls have very different colors for uh, the compressional parts. Uh, we also need to add a color bar so we can know what the color means. Uh, so gen D color bar uh, and um, minus B, yeah. Okay, so this is a color bar of the um, of the beach ball color beach ball depth, and uh, I also want to have a label, so I can add a label like depth kilometer, and uh, I want to put the color bar at the right of the of the map, so I can use minus D and uh, WG to put the color bar at the middle right middle right of the map. So this is our final figure. So from this figure, it's clearly we, we can see that the reverse spot has a very shallow depth and the strike save has a, a medium depth, maybe 25 kilometers. And the, the normal fault earthquake have a very large earthquake, larger than uh, 50 kilometers. Okay, so that's all about the mecha uh, modules. Um, in this uh, part, I introduced about introduced a minus, minus s, minus c, minus g, minus e, and also the minus p option to control the uh, locations, the title, and uh, uh, the color of the, the, the compressional part and the extensional part of the of the beach balls. So that's all about the mecha module. Next, let's go to the copper module. The copper module is used to plot beach balls on cross sections. Uh, usually, we use a vertical cross section, so the y axis is a depth. Um, let's first go to VS Code and uh, create a new file for the following examples. And uh, let's save it to uh, cross section.sh. So, we still need to use GMP begin and the uh, cross section GMP and the show. And uh, we are going to use the group module. And uh, the Mecca module and the code module, they have the same input. So, we need to pass, pass the example data, Mecca.dat, to this uh, module. And uh, then I will go to the terminal and type GMP docs curve to see the documentation of the this module. Uh, as you can see, there are many options here, and uh, um, most of the options actually have the same meaning in Mecca. So the minus s minus s uh, option uh, can select uh, can determine the um, color the meaning of the columns in the input data. And the minus C option can determine the color of the compressional part uh, based on the earthquake depth. 
and the minus E and the minus G option to uh, determine to control the colors of the uh, extensional part and the compressional part. So they are all the same. So in the GMT group, we also need to use, use minus S perching uh, minus SA one centimeter to tell that our data um, is uh, in RK and Richard convection and the, the size of the beach ball is one centimeter. Uh, the most important and the unique option in Coke is minus A. Uh, minus A uh, is used to select the cross section. It's used to specify the cross section. There are many different ways to specify, specify the cross section. So minus A, capital A, small a. Um, in this way, we can give the locations of the starting point and the ending point of the cross section. And uh, if we use minus A, B, we can give the starting point, the location of the starting point of the cross section, and also the strike and the length of the cross section. Here, we are going to use minus A, capital A, small a here. And uh, let's go back to this image. Assume that we are going to use, um, to have a cross section like this, like this line. And uh, we want to plot all the beach balls um, along this cross section. And uh, then the starting point of the, of the cross section is when, uh, when, when zero, 33, and uh, the end point of the, pro 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 uh, the cross section is uh, 120 to no, 120, 33. So if we run this script, we will, we will see an error. The error says that we must specify minus R option for the study region or the minus A and the, the plus small R modifier. Uh, That's because um, in the cross section view, the X axis is the distance along this uh, profile and the Y axis is the depth. So we need, we have to tell Cope that uh, the study region and the, so now we can use plus R to let Cope to automatically, automatically determine the study, the region of the map. And let's run it again. Now we can see a fit like this. Um, here we also need one want to give the projection information and also automatic frames. And uh, so let's use minus J. And uh, we know that it's a linear projection. The x, x, x direction is the distance. So we can have a 10 centimeter, uh, 10 centimeter width. And uh, the y axis is the depth. We can give uh, five centimeter. And then we want to have automatic annotations and the frame. Let's run the script again. Okay. Now we have three, um, we already have the three pitch balls on the cross section. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is the distance along the profile. So zero kilometer is here, and uh, the maybe 900 kilometer is here. And uh, okay, I can change a little about the labels. So for the x axis, I can add a label called distance kilometer. For y axis, um, we can add a label called depth kilometer. And let's run the script. So for the y-axis, zero is here, and this is 50, uh, degree, uh, 50 kilometer. Usually we want to reverse the y-axis so that uh, this is depth zero and this is depth uh, 50. Uh, this can be done by give a negative height to the map. So we can change five centimeter to five, negative five centimeter, and then we can run the script again. If you look at this figure, you probably are not satisfied with the y, the automatic range for the y axis. Uh, you probably want to want the y axis to start with uh, 
zero, and then you can remove plus R, and uh, we can manually determine, manually specify the region. So minus R and uh, the X axis is from zero to maybe we can use 10,000 kilometers. And the Y axis is zero to, I want to, to have uh, 6K kilometers. So let's draw on the script. Okay, now it looks better. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, so we can use the minus E option, minus E option, and also like minus C option to control the colors. Like we can use minus D and uh, to have a red color and the minus E to have a light blue color for the uh, compressional part and the extensional part. Okay, so all the options, all the other options um, are the same in Coke and uh, Mecca, so you can try yourself. Okay, that's all about the Coke module. After learning the Mecca and the Coke modules, now we will come about uh, beach balls uh, of real earthquakes. Uh, many agencies uh, like Global CMD projects and the USGS provide a focal mechanism of earthquakes. So you can just download focal mechanism information from this um, agencies and then plot them with Mecca and Coke. Here I will show you how to get Focal mechanism information from the global CMP project. Let's go to this uh, GitHub page. Uh, this is a link for the, the main site of the global CMP project. This project provides focal mechanism information of global earthquakes with magnitude greater than 5.5. So uh, we can scroll down to this link, the CMP catalog web search. And now you can select uh, the uh, focal magnitude information based on the uh, date, based on the magnitude and the locations. For example, let's uh, set the starting time from zero, uh, from 2010, the first day of 2010 to uh, maybe the last day uh, of 20, uh, 2015. And uh, then we don't see set any magnitude uh, constraint. And uh, for the locations, we can search the earthquakes around the, like Japan. And uh, the latitude, latitude is about 30 degree to maybe 50 degree. And uh, the longitude is from 125 to 150. And we can also limit the depth of the earthquakes. Then in the output type, we can select the GMP PS Mecca input and click the down button. Then you will see a list of earthquakes here. There are many earthquakes, earthquakes here. Um, you should be careful that um, the columns of the, you should be careful about the meaning of the columns. The first three columns are the longitude, latitude, and depth of the earthquakes. And then there are three, uh, six components of the seismic moment tensor. So the output of the global CMP catalog is uh, given by uh, seismic moment tensor. So when you use make on the curve, we need to use minus SM, minus SZ, or minus SD. So we can't use minus SA because it's not actually and Richard convection is given by size, uh, seismic moment tensor. And then um, we just need to copy these lines and uh, save it to a file. And then we can use this file to plot beach balls. Um, we can pass this file to Mac and Coke to plot beach balls of all these, these earthquakes. Okay, here is an example. And uh, you can split into teams and uh, then you can work on um, together to determine that, to discuss uh, what's the commands and options you are going to use to plot a figure, two figures like this one. So this is a map view and uh, using Mecca and this is a cross-section view, use Coke. And uh, in this uh, map view, we can uh, use grid image to plot the Earth relief and then Mecca to uh, Mecca and uh, uh, to plot the, all the focal mechanisms. Um, and in this figure, the 
the the color of the compression part are color coded by the depth of the earthquakes, and uh, for the cope for the cross section view is uh, similar. Um, I think that's all, and uh, you can um, try your try you you can also try yourself to find the best solution to plot these two images. If you are uh, you you need some inspirations, then you can see this uh, script here. Okay, that's all about the GMP post technology. Thank you. Okay, I hope all you all have a good uh, internet connection and the All right, you are starting to come back. We'll wait a minute to make sure everybody's uh, admitted into the main hall. <laughs> Waiting room is slowly emptying. Right. Um, Melissa, are we kind of good to go? Recording is activated yeah. again. Okay. All right. Welcome back after the long break. Um, so the next section is on geodesy, and we are lucky to have Eric Zhu here to to show us how that is done. So Eric, you have like I think you have a total of ninety minutes, including you know whatever time for breakouts and so on. Oh, okay. Um, so. so there's a link that. Hopefully you guys have received either from the email or in the Slack channel. They are the data to be used for this session. Um, and for the sake of small and quiet demo, I, I recorded the video and we're gonna play that. Um, otherwise you might hear some unpleasant noise. <laughs> uh, so Melissa, could you please play the recorded video? I didn't get a recording. Oh, I'll send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> Copy link address. And I'm gonna, just going to send it to the chat. Okay. It's on YouTube, so. There it is. Yeah. See it. All right. Give me a second here. Sure. Can everybody see? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Let me see if the sound's going to come through. Hi, everyone. I'm Shaofa Xu from uh, UT Austin. Uh, sorry that I have to make this lecture uh, in this format. Uh, so we'll be going over uh, the tools in GMP um, to plot geodetic data, mainly targeting uh, plotting vectors. Uh, so there are like a, uh, many kinds of geodetic data, like grids or, or lines or uh, vectors um, or, or like deformation field uh, and GMP has all the functions to plot them. Uh, but over here, uh, we're going to go over some of the functions, uh, mainly using the, the um, plot function in GMT and with this minus SE option uh, for vector attributes. Um, so there are like a bunch of commands that you guys can go through uh, probably and, and uh, we're gonna do this hands-on mode. So let me stop share and uh, switch to the VSC. All right. Uh, 
so over here, uh, what we're going to do is that uh, we'll do a real demo to sort of go through all these uh, vector attributes and then sort of help you guys understand uh, how you can control the, uh, the plotting uh, of vectors. Mm, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to do a GMT minus minus new script. Uh, we're going to do it in bash. So let's call this plot uh, web. Uh, as such. And now you see that, oh, I'm in the wrong directory. Let me move this to this directory, go to vectors. Uh, so there are like a bunch of files in this uh, folder that's downloaded um, like uh, before uh, this part starts. So that contains some of the uh, example data set that we're going to use later on. But for the moment, let's open this plot web.sh. Uh, so now you can see that this is calling bash, and you want to specify a session uh, name, just call it 11. And we want to call this uh, figure name to be vec, and in the format of PNG. Uh, but before we really get started, um, we do want some data to be plotted, right? So we're going to create a data using the echo command. Say that we want to plot a vector that starts from 0, 0 uh, with the value being 1 and 1. Um, because this is using the minus SE option, so it's actually allowing to, to, to plot the uh, uncertainty circle. So we're going to add some uncertainty to this arrow that is um, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And the last column in the input is actually the, um, how to say, the, the correlation between these uh, uh, errors. For the moment, let's just call it, uh, we're going to use um, um, some no correlation between them. So in the end, it's going to come out as a circle. If you give it some kind of a correlation, then it's going to uh, become a, 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 a and eclipse. So let's type this data, I mean, redirect this data into a file called maybe temp.dat. Um, then we'll start plotting. Uh, so the command that we'll be using in GMP is called uh, willow or ps the low. Um, and using the minus se option. So there are three inputs associated with uh, this minus SE option. Um, the first one is uh, the scale you'll be plotting. So here we're going to just use um, full scale, like 100%, which is 1.0. The second input is actually the confidence level. Um, so here we're going to use 6, uh, 0.65, which corresponds to like one sigma. So that's basically when you give this number over here, uh, if you use one uncertainty, it's going to show up uh, as exact value. And the last one is actually the font size. Um, if there are any like label associated, we're just going to use default like 10 over here. Um, and we also want to specify the uh, some line parameters. We want to give the width of one pixel. And if we, if we save this script and then in the command window, let's call bash uh, plot wreck of sh. Oops, some error. Uh, Melissa, I think there are some windows that's getting into the way of the screen share. Uh, is it possible that you drag these? Oh, because I didn't something. give it a projection. I forgot to give it a projection. So yeah, let's we were set a parameter it. called, let's say, JRB uh, equal. Yeah, let me pause it. <laughs> and there's, there's, it's in the way. Yeah, there are a couple of Zoom windows that's sort of blocking the, um, the screen share. Um, I mean, they show up as like, uh, uh, a couple of like boxes in the middle of the screen share. Um, 
wonder if I make it this way. Does it, do the screen shares go away if I share it this way? Yeah, this is better, I think. Okay, okay. I'll play it this way. <laughs> and stay, let's use uh, Cartesian coordinates. Um, See, we're going to give it a size of three and three because, um, you know, this is sort of wraps up this vector. And minus r, let's start from minus one to two, uh, which matches the uh, three sides. So everything is seeing scale, minus one and two. And we're going to give the frame, um, annotation being one, frame being one, and g being one, grid line being one. And we're going to call that parameter right over here. Let's call it dollar GRD. If we save it, go one more time. Okay, it has to show up. Um, one second. Let me open this. Okay, double column, close this. So now you see an arrow that starts from zero to one uh, with an uncertainty circle being uh, about 0.2. So if we play with this uh, uncertainty level, say for example, that we want like two sigma, which corresponds to 95, uh, you see this circle getting doubled. Uh, if you save this script again, and then run the same thing, uh, you see that this is getting twice the size. Uh, if you want three sigma, which is 99%, uh, and do it again, let's see it's getting like uh, tripled. So um, the next one we're gonna play with is uh, the correlation between them. For example, um, we, we, we want this to have some correlation between these uh, uncertainties. Uh, if we give it a number for like 0.5, uh, that means um, these two errors are kind of associated with each other, the increase with one, uh, may or may not necessarily result in the increase of the other one. And if you run this script again, you see that oh, the, uh, the uncertainty circle becomes an eclipse that sort of represents um, more realistic errors. And close this. Next, we will be playing with this uh, arrow. Uh, over here, for example, if you want to change the size of it, uh, we're going to use the minus a option to control it. For example, we want to do 20 pixel and uh, with the plus c, e, which means at the end, uh, and the a, which is a fancy arrow. And if you save this and run this one more time, oh, you see that the arrow is becoming uh, larger than before. Actually, there are more that you can play with. For example, uh, we want at the beginning uh, to be an arrow um, tail that you just plus bi. You see now there's a tail over there. Yeah, 20 pixel might be too big. Let's change it back to 10. Um, and for example, I want the arrow to be filled with, for example, blue color. Then you give it a plus g, blue. If you save this and run it one more time, you see that it's um, the arrow and the tail are being filled with uh, the blue color. And also the minus W is actually controlling the line, the line plot over here. But for example, if I don't want the arrow to be very thick, uh, you can actually re-specify the, um, the width of that using the plus P, which is giving it a pen. Uh, similar as the minus W option, but for the arrow plot, uh, let's give it a 0.1 pixel. And if you run one more time, you'll see that um, the line, the outline of these arrows are becoming thinner than before. Um, and there's another option that allows you to plot only, for example, half of this um, um, arrow, which is plus L plus R. Um, if you give it the plus L, uh, save it and run the script, you see that only half of it is getting uh, plotted. Um, there's another thing that you can play with. For example, if you want to plot a, um, a right lateral uh, symbol, um, what you can do is, for example, we, we don't want to plot any uncertainty associated with it. So we're just going to put zero over here. 
and the rhombus. Oh, we don't we don't want the tail either. Uh, let's remove the plus bi. We run it, and then this is half of the right lateral motion, right? And you can basically duplicate this line. And we want to plot the right hand side. Uh, but we want it to be shifted a little bit so that the two arrows are not at the same place. So we're going to use the minus y shift option. Let's move it by maybe 0.2. Uh, but also to uh, realize is that you don't want the arrow to be on the same side. Uh, so instead of EA, you want to BA. And if you do the script again, oops. Shouldn't have specified this twice. <laughs> Let's remove the dollar JBR, JRB, and run this one more time. Okay, now you have a, a right lateral motion symbol. So that's pretty much for the vector attributes. Um, next, we're going to go through uh, uh, another example and that's associated with the Ridge Crest, uh, the 2019 Ridge Crest earthquakes. So let's start a new script. Let's call it uh, GMT minus new script equals bash into block um, math.sh. Open that um, right here. And we don't need this anymore. Um, so let's call this, uh, do the same thing here. Uh, we want to call it a figure name. Let's say it's called demo. And it's also going to be PNG. Um, but before we really get started to plot this map, let's go through some of the files over here. So what's originally in the tarball is actually um, these a couple of script, uh, this a couple of files. Uh, we can actually do a ls minus l ht, and we should be able to see everything in that directory. So this dm.cpt is just a, a, a color table for plotting uh, topography, and this GPS data are actually acquired uh, are the acquired co seismic deformation uh, in it uh, for the ridge crest earthquakes. Uh, if you do uh... apologies, let me fix this again. <laughs> I'm just going to stop and then restart. And APS.DAT is going to show you the top of few lines in it. You see it's composed of longitude, latitude, and east-north deformation. Uh, they are in millimeters. And, and also the associated uncertainty and their correlation. I mean, the last three columns are just made up, so you know, they don't really mean anything uh, over here. And um, this DMDSAM.GRD is just uh, a, a EM data uh, over the region. Uh, you could uh, essentially use the um, DM directly from the uh, uh, Hawaii website, um, but this one is a little bit different. This is the DM above the ellipsoid. I guess the one distributed at Hawaii is above uh, geoid. Um, there are some differences between them, but uh, you could use either of them. Um, this new false.gmt uh, are uh, actually the mapped uh, rupture and the secondary ruptures, uh, uh, like cracks near the rupture uh, from, from this event. And this DE.GRD and BN.GRD uh, are the deformation grids uh, in the east and north directions uh, derived from a kinematic slip model um, that's inverted from uh, uh, geodetic data like INSAR and GNSS. So after we have gone through that, uh, let's start uh, plotting. Uh, again, we're going to make some parameters. Uh, say that we want to set up some variables, the dm 
uh, is actually this file, which is the um, esand.grd. And we also want the GPS data to be defined. Uh, so it's a gps.bat file. Uh, with okay, apologies again. Let me try one more time. <laughs> Okay, is it better? Is the screen better now? It looks all on my side. Yes, much better. Okay. Much better. okay. We also want to set the range, but over here, we're going to set the range based on uh, um, getting the information from this uh, uh, grid file. Uh, there's a really useful command in GMT called GRD info, right? Uh, so if we run GMT GRD info, on this de.grd, uh, you will see that um, all the information associated is getting popped out. Right? You have the range of this and the increment, how many columns, how many rows, and the basic scale um, of this grid. <clears throat> so what you can do is that you can append some um, input uh, with this command that's minus i minus. This is gonna give you the range of the square. This is this X mean, X max, and Y mean, Y max, because that's what we need for, for determining the region for plotting, right? And it's gonna give you this minus R uh, with the four parameters. So we're gonna use this as the input to define this variable, uh, how we're gonna do that. So basically you give it the quote over here, which is the, um, on your keyboard, it's the button that's left to your number one on top. You're gonna quote it and then uh, give it this command. So what this, what this uh, line does is that it's gonna get the output from this command and assign it to this RR uh, variable. So next we're gonna do uh, the output. We already specified it here, but we're gonna define it in, uh, let's say we can call it demo and format uh, in PNG. So here we can change this to dollar output and then here dollar format. So a good way of doing it, like setting a lot of variables at the beginning of this plotting script is that later on you could just change any of them and then you can run this uh, script again to create a map for other data. So let's start with uh, plotting a base map. So it's GMT base map. Um, and we're going to use the MACTAR uh, projection. Let's give it a size of six. And we already have this RR variable, so we're just going to call it dollar RR. Um, again, we're going to set the minus B option. Um, let's try A1, F1, 5. This time, we don't want to plot the grid because in the map, there will be other data like uh, DN. If we save it and then run the stash uh, plot map dot SH, and it's going to give us a plot. Let's open it. Yeah, that model the PNG. Do a double column. Okay, now we have a map plot uh, on the right. Uh, it's basically just nothing there, um, as it's just a base map. <laughs> So the next, we're gonna plot the, the DEM data. So the command we'll be using is called GRD image as we learned yesterday, uh, GMT GRD image. Mm. And the file, input file will be the dollar DEM, which is this DEM DSAMP.GRD. And we're gonna eliminate the uh, DEM with minus I. And then we're gonna give it a color table called DEM.CPT. Right, we have that in the directory. But if we run this, yeah, it, it doesn't look very good. Um, the main reason is because um, this is too saturated. Um, I mean, you do want to snow, but uh, you don't expect this much snow. It looks like Ice Age. Um, so the, the uh, 
tool we're going to play with over here is called uh, make CPT. So we're going to make a new uh, color table based on the color table that we have uh, in this directory. Um, let's do it over here, GMT make CPT. Uh, the color table we'll be using will be the dm.cpt in this directory. And we give it a minus t, which specifies for the range. You want to scale it. Uh, over here, we're going to do a zero to, I mean, the theorists are probably somewhere around a couple thousand meters. So let's try 3,000 meters mm, with an increment of two, uh, 200 meters. Then minus t, minus d. Uh, which means continuous color table and, and also saturate at maximum number. So in other words, anything that's above this 3,000 will be uh, plotted as a value uh, 3,000. Um, so let's call it uh, dm2.cpt or maybe dm10.cpt. Then over here, uh, we'll change this dm.cpt to the one that's just made. And if we save this, and make the new plot. Oh, it looks better. Um, but somehow uh, it feels like this gradient is a little bit too strong over here. So we're going to tweak with this minus i option uh, with plus n uh, to sort of tune the, the, the strengths of the, uh, uh, of the gradient. Uh, we're going to use a linear case. Let's try exponential this time, minus d e, uh, plus n e dot three, if they save this and run the plot map. Okay, things are less shaded and uh, looks more reasonable, maybe. Um, okay, next we're gonna plot the coastlines just as we learned yesterday. Um, let me move this upward a little bit. So let's try GMT coast. Uh, we wanna plot the boulders. Um, I'm going to plot all the borders, uh, including the, the state borders between California and Nevada. Uh, we want it to be, let's say, 25 pixel uh, with black color and its dash lines. And we also want to fill the, the ocean. There are like a tiny bit of ocean over here as well. And uh, we're going to use a minus S option uh, with the uh, ocean color, uh, blue, light blue. And we want to plot it as at full definition. Um, and also we want to, uh, the coastline to be plotted with some like a, maybe black line. So we can use a minus W option with one pixel um, black. All right, uh, let's run this one more time and uh, see what happens. Oh, save this first and then run it again. Oh yeah, like one pixel might be too thick. You can't even see this lake over here. Uh, let's try 0.5, I mean 0.1. Save it, run it again. Now we can see the lake, cool. Um, after that, uh, we'll be using the command called GRD vector to plot the, the vector uh, deformation field. Um, so over here, um, and we're going to plot it on top of this whole thing. GMT uh, GRD vector. Um, let's give the input file called de.grd and dn.grd. Uh, over here, there will be a minus s option to sort of tell you the, the skill that's going to get used. Um, over here, we're going to give it like 50. Um, because if you think about the deformation we just saw, um, actually the range is like largely from negative 100 to 100. Um, and since we're using the six uh, as a size, um, we want the largest vector probably being like somewhere less than two. So we're giving it this 50 over here. And we want the minus i option, which is just point 0.1 increment. So every point 0.1 degree is gonna you know, give it new input vector and the width to be uh, wanted to be very thin because we'll be plotting a lot of vectors uh, on one pixel and for the vector attributes uh, of GRD vector you'll be using the minus q option um, well here we're going to give it a 10 pixel size um, 
at the end with a, mm, we're just, just going to do a plain error this time. Oh, it's plus EA, right? And if we save this and run it one more time, yeah, it says no unit specified in minus S, but it's okay. Now you have this uh, vector plotted, like you can sort of see this a red lateral motion, like the rupture this way and that way. Also in this uh, GRD vector command, uh, there is this new auto labeling option, which is uh, called minus L. And for example, I want to give it, um, because uh, the scaling that you're giving here is about 50, I'm going to try uh, this default uh, 50 millimeter. And if you run this one more time, uh, you have this automatic label on top. Uh, but if you want to plot, for example, a much smaller um, um, like label, I don't want this to be 50, I want this to be 20 or 30 maybe, uh, you can actually change it over here, but you also need to give it a plus S option to, to scale this um, because that's basically only like 0.6 of the 50 millimeter. So you're gonna use a 0.6 over here if you save it and then do it one more time, then this auto label becomes 30 millimeter. Um, okay, what's next? Uh, next, we're gonna plot the, the faults on top of this. And the command we'll be using is called GNT uh, plot. Uh, the file is new faults.gnt. Uh, but before we do this, uh, let's take a look inside what's uh, I mean in this uh, data and you find uh, that this is basically uh, like a bunch of segments that records where the rupture starts and ends and how it occurs in space. Um, they are separated with this minus L uh, in the data. So GMP knows like uh, there are like multiple segments that you're, you'll be plotting. Uh, and we want it to be uh, for example, 0.5 pixel wide uh, with, I don't know, maybe orange colors. And we save this and run this flash plot again. Oh, you see some like new fault ruptures in it. Um, all right, next we're, we'll be uh, plotting the GNSS data. Um, but before we really do that, uh, we want to uh, plot the GNSS stations um, first. I'm going to use this plot command again and then dollar GPS. We're going to plot them in uh, triangles um, with maybe 0.15 sides. And the outline will be in 0.1 pixel um, with black colors. And um, for the fail, we're going to give it um, maybe in green. GREN. Then we save this. I run it. Okay, all the GNSS stations uh, shows up on this map. Uh, next, we're going to plot the vectors uh, GMT below and dollar GPS. Uh, we're going to use the same uh, scale that's specified here, minus S, because this is uh, the lens scale. Uh, let's, let me try to put an L here so that it doesn't warn me anymore. Um, minus S um, point oh two. And we want to plot because our certainty with Azam is pretty small. Let's do a nine nine so that you can you guys can see the circles and font size being ten. And we're going to use the minus a option, um, ten pixel size arrowhead um, at the end with a fancy arrow, um, and then we're going to give it a width of 0 0.1 pixel. And mm, we're going to use blue colors maybe. And for the fill, we want to give it a black colors. And if we save this and oh, I'll recognize, oh, I forgot to give it the minus SE. <laughs> Do this one more time. Ooh, what happened? I don't know what happened, but um, oh yeah, it's just minus L. 
leave that for the moment. Essentially, you could do the same thing as this scale over here, uh, which is minus i one zero two. So they are the same. Now that we have finished plotting all the vectors, uh, but what if we want to plot something else? For example, we want to plot the amplitude of the deformation uh, on top of this map. Um, so while the deformation is being shaded uh, with uh, the topographic information over here, um, and then you use these vectors to denote the, the deformation direction. Uh, so how are we going to do that? Um, so the way you do it is actually, uh, you could create a new grid using the GMT functions over here, for example. Um, so GMT is actually a pretty powerful tool that can um, not only just do plotting, but it actually they can calculate the grids uh, as well. So the command we will be using is called GMT GRD map. Um, so the way we do it that because we have the eastward deformation, north deformation, we can combine these two together to get the amplitude of deformation. Um, and this GRD mass also uses a, a format called the reverse polish. Um, like approach or something, uh, you guys can Google that. Uh, it's a pretty fun way of writing things. Uh, so we're gonna give this ee.grd, ee.grd. We're gonna multiply these two together. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing for the north component. And then after these two squares uh, of E and N, we're gonna add them together and then do a square root of it. And the output file, we're going to just call it like d.grd or something. So now we have this amplitude image. Uh, let me make this a little bit wider. Um, so now we have this deformation grid. Uh, then how are we going to plot it? We're going to need a new color table, right? So we'll be making a new color table. Um, we'll be using, for example, jet. Uh, this time we're going to do a sort of red to green. We're just going to use half of the color bar. Um, so we'll be using minus T option um, from negative. We want it to be a little bit saturated so, so that you can, can sort of see the impact of the earthquake. Let's try 30, minus 30, 230 with a five increment minus C minus D into D dot CPT. All right, um, but we do want to plot this uh, before we do any other overlays like the coastline and the vectors. And we want it to be on the background, so we had to select the position to implement it. Um, so we're going to replace this GRD image command of the EM uh, with the deformation. So we're going to hashtag this to comment it out and uh, GMT GRD image D dot GRD uh, minus C, uh, we're going to use the e.cpt file. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. And if we save it and run this one more time, oh, you'll see that they have the deformation field in the background, right? OK, next, we're going to shade this image so that we can see some of topographic information. And the command we'll be using is called GMT JRD gradient. This is a similar as the minus i option where you are uh, plotting the using the GRD image, but this is more flexible that you can use a lot of parameters to control it. Um, but before we do that, um, since we're going to use the shading of this deformation grid, you have to sample your uh, topography grid to the deformation grid uh, first so that those two grids are matching up. Um, so we'll be doing a GMT um, GRT sample, um, the dollar DEM and minus R DE dot GRG. So this is actually sampling the DEM uh, to the size uh, and sampling uh, of this DE grid. And uh, output grid will be, mm, let's call it a DEM temp dot GRG. Now we have this DEM temp. We're going to work the gradient 
on it. Uh, again, we're going to use the uh, minus n option to specify the um, how to say uh, which direction you are uh, essentially not, I mean, not which direction, like how large of a gradient you are going to give it. Uh, for the moment, let's try the n e point three, and you also need the minus a option, which is like which direction you'll be doing this gradient. The default is negative 45. So we're going to just use negative 45 uh, degrees uh, for the moment. And the output grid will be E and temp reading of TRD. If you save this, and then while you are plotting this GRD image, you give it a minus I option and then give it this file name. So it's going to use this file as an uh, illumination uh, for the plotting. If you save this and run it one more time, now you can see that the, um, <laughs> the topography of our mission are actually shading the image, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, OK, I think that's pretty much everything for plotting vectors. Um, if you go to that uh, uh, GitHub page that we started, uh, you see that there are more things that you can add to this map, like the focal mechanism, the epicenters, uh, and maybe you can find like data for other earthquakes uh, to, to play with. Uh, so feel free to experiment on that. And uh, um, I think I only missed one thing uh, from this plot web, which is uh, to how do you like color these uh, vectors? Um, so I'm gonna try that um, and sort of like show you guys how to do it uh, on this um, plot web script again. Let's try to open that PNG file, do a double colon. Uh, so actually, GMT allows you to to sort of give a color table to uh, to color these uh, vectors. Uh, I didn't like sort of go through that at the beginning uh, because that's sort of like a new feature I think Paul just implemented. Um, and we're going to expand the data a little bit. Uh, let's try it uh, without this double couple. Let's comment it out. And we don't want just half of it. Um, and duplicate these lines like three times so that we have three vectors to uh, play with. Now let's uh, change this start and end. Uh, let's start from 0.5 for this one. And, and also we want the deformation to be 0.5 and 0.5. Um, then we get a slightly smaller uncertainty. Uh, the other one, we're gonna start from negative 0.5 and with large amplitude. So you see like three vectors in this plot. Give the larger uncertainty. Uh, let's just give it some strange numbers. <laughs> um, let's do this. Uh, dash plot left plot sh. Oh yeah, forgot to comment this line. And you also need this part to be double redirect because um, that's uh, like creating a file and this appending this is appending to that file so you have three like uh, lines of data in the file if you run that one more time you'll see like three vectors parallel to each other um, we do want the error bars to show up give it a 0.99 that's too big um, this file is good All right, uh, so how are we gonna uh, color these? Um, like, if you wanna give it a color um, color table, you can actually, but you need to make a, a new color table first. Uh, let's do the GMT make CPT one more time. Um, I'm gonna use rainbow with minus T zero to uh, 2.5 and 5.5 maybe. B minus B into web.cpt. Then what you can do is that uh, 
you sort of give this um, a minus C option with the VAC plus CPT. If you save this script, run this one more time, give it, hmm, seems nothing's getting changed, but that's because you have this plus G option that's overriding this uh, uh, coloring option. So we have, to, we have to remove this part in order to let it work. Run it one more time, you see that these uh, arrows are having uh, different colors now. And we're going to make a color bar over here, GMT color bar minus C, WAC dot CPT, and to minus D, X, and start with 0.1, 0.1, um, plus W is to 1.5 over 0.1. And save it. Now you have a color bar that tells you like, um, like how large are their, their values. And the thing is that if you want to, for example, not just color the arrow, but on the other hand, you want to color these lines as well, then you have to modify this um, minus W option. You have to give it a plus C. Uh, then it's going to color the lines as well. It's using this color table. If we save it here and then run the bash again, they're going to be with these colors. Uh, if, another thing you can do is that if you are really bothered by this uh, outline, um, you don't want it to have a, a black outline or any color outline. Uh, you can essentially just give it a zero. Uh, or no, you can just essentially give it a, a, a no input over here. So it's not going to plot anything. Now things are becoming a pure color. Uh, OK, that's pretty much everything I want to show here. Um, uh, um, feel free to play with the data. Thanks. All right, we should be back. Can you all see my slides? Yes, I can. One can and all can. Excellent. All right, so the last section today is going to be about uh, making animations with GMT. And of course, we only have time for a little bit playing around. You could look on our website for more examples and go to the YouTube channel, which you can get to from the main GMT site for longer animations. So uh, in GMT to make movie, with, uh, you need to make uh, use of two movie, two module called movie and uh, events. So basically making uh, movies is simply creating a bunch of same size frames of PNGs or JPEGs or whatever, and put them together in the right order and play them back in a reasonable time. So there's sort of two time axes here. One is the playback time, you know, how many frames per second do you want to use? And you know, Hollywood movies are 24 frames per second. Uh, you may slow that down. And then we have the animation time, which is what is the time in real time between each frame? Because they could be nanoseconds or millions of years, depending on what you do. So, uh, but we want the time constant between two frames to be equal. Otherwise, it, it gets sort of out of whack. So our trick here is to select these playbacks and animation times so that it properly represents the signs you want to show. Uh, to make movies, it's no different than making GMT plots. Um, by default, we have a canvas size that is sort of a typical page uh, of paper. But uh, depending on the specifics, you know, it could be a 16 by 9 HD kind of format. And then the paper size is a little bit different by default. You can change these things, but that's the default. And if it's more 4 by 3, then because then it's uh, different dimensions. But basically, you compose your plot as if you were making a real figure, and you move around on that page with minus x and minus y. So there's a couple of quotes related to repetition here. You all heard about Einstein who said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. This is one definition of insanity. And uh, I have another one here that GMT animation is doing the same thing over and over again, but getting different results. So how can we do that? Well, that's the whole thing about the variables. We're going to write a script that is the same thing, but it's gonna actually produce different things through the use of variables. So we will see that when we write a GMT plot a movie script, that it looks like a GMT regular script like you've been doing in the last two days, but then we're gonna change something about the script that we want to vary between the frames. 
Otherwise, we get the same frame again and again, you know, the first case with Einstein. So we want to uh, change things. And we'll see the special variables that get assigned for us that we can use in these uh, scripts. Uh, often we have movies that have a constant background image, like a topography image or something. We can specify we want a certain thing to happen in the background, or alternatively, a certain thing should be laid on top of all the frames. So those are only done once, and they can even be a finished post-script plot. And then movie takes care of everything else, and it will use all the cores in your computer and run all the frames and put them together into a movie. So here are the special variables that are created for you. And they have names like movie width, movie height, movie dot per inch, dot per unit, sorry, rate and end frames. If you need those numbers in your script, they are available to you. But here's the more interesting things. Um, so these are variables that change for each frame being computed. All right, so let's say we have a data table that has you know, hundreds of records and the 48th record uh, looks like this, 56 West, 23 North, 45 minus 3,500 X5 Atlantis. That's one record in a data table. Now, if you want to use some of those numbers in a script for that particular record or frame, we would use the dollar, these various variables on the left here. So for instance, uh, dollar frame will have the current frame number. Uh, more interestingly, movie column and then a number will have the value at that record for that column. So say uh, movie column three, when we're doing uh, the 48th frame, it will be minus 3,500. That is the third, counting from zero, zero, one, two, three, the, the, basically the, the three, the, the, the fourth in a sense, column in that data record. That will be minus 3,500 when we run the script and that particular frame is made. If you have trailing text in your input file, like here, X5 Atlantics, you could use movie text, which will be the whole sentence, X5 Atlantis, or you could specify a word uh, of the text with movie word two or movie word one and so on. So we're gonna do a very simple example to see how this actually works. We're gonna make a movie of the earth spinning around using the orthographic projection. And we're gonna use the central longitude that's uh, gonna be the frame uh, number. So as the frame number goes along, we're gonna basically pick a different viewing point for this projection. Uh, and then we'll uh, put these frames together and we will see that the earth is spinning around. And we'll do this at a pretty low, uh, low resolution movie format like 360p, since we don't wanna wait for everybody's computer to, to do all the higher resolutions. So, and then we're gonna play with this a little bit. So I'm gonna stop the, uh, this presentation here. Hold a second here, I'm gonna stop the share. Um, I did not want to do that. I'm gonna start the share again. There's my code, share, all right. So I'm gonna start a new script. I'm gonna call it globe. Sh. And it's going to be a GMT plot that we've done before. GMT begin. I'm going to call it map. Map. And I'm going to do a coast job. GMT coast. I'm Paul, going to make a. Oh, yeah. Paul, we are not seeing your screen. Only you. Although I shared it. You're not seeing it. I, I'm not seeing it. I can see it. I could see it. I could see it. Oh. Okay, Joachim. Okay, it. so forget. I can't still, but no problem. I'll share the desktop. Maybe this will. Is that better, Joachim? No, because I, I was, I was seeing, I was seeing it before you interrupt. But okay, continue. Maybe yeah. something with iPad. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, so no, the rest no, of you no. can see it, right? When I yeah. type here. Okay. Yeah, if so, the others can see it, okay. Yeah, that's more important. Okay, I'm gonna make a global map. So G for a global map. I'm gonna use the, uh, the orthographic projection, which takes a central longitude, I'll do 30, a latitude, I'll do latitude 30. And I'm gonna do a 12 centimeter plot. I'm gonna give 
colors. So, okay, I'm going to do uh, burly wood, which is a pearl color for land. And I'm going to paint the ocean tomato color, horrible color. If you don't like my colors, you can change them, right? These are my colors. I get to choose. And I'm going to draw the grid lines. And I'm going to, well, let's do that for now. And that's it. Uh, GMT end show. Save that. And in the terminal, I'm going to run bash globe.sh. I can type. Fantastic. Okay, a, a map from space, basically orthographic projection. I, the colors are horrible, but you know, if you don't like them, you change them, right? Okay, so now I want to make a movie where this thing is spinning around. Well, what's gonna make it spin around? Well, it's gonna be this number here, right? The central longitude. If I change that to you know 80 and run it again, I get the view from longitude 80, right? So all I need to do is to have this number change in a sensible automatic way. And the way we're gonna do this is to use these variables. So since we know that the frame number goes from zero, one, two, three, four, so on, I'm gonna use that variable as my longitude. All right, so I'm gonna say, change this uh, 80 to dollar movie, frame, whatever that is. And that's gonna be my, my central longitude. Well, it's not gonna happen by itself. The movie command has to do this. So to keep things simple, I'm gonna write as a comment, the movie command inside this script. So it's just a comment. And it's gonna be GMT movie. And GMT movie is unusual in that its input is actually a script. In fact, it is this script, globe.sh. And I'm going to make a movie, pretty low resolution, 360p, so 360 lines. Um, and it's an old 4x3 format, I think. Um, I'm going to have I'm going to have the longitude swing from zero to 90 inclusive. So that is 91 frames, zero, one, two, all the way up to 90. Um, and I'm going to call the product globe. It's going to be a name of the movie and the other product. And before I make a movie that might take a long time to run and realize that I screwed up, I'm just going to make one frame just to look at it. So I'm going to pick frame uh, 55 and PNG. So that's what I want to run. Okay, so I've saved this script. If I run it, I kind of just got an error because GMT movie frame doesn't exist, right? But I'm gonna copy this command here, copy it and place it in the terminal and run it. And I got uh, nothing up here. <laughs> that was very strange. Why did that not happen? Oh. Sorry about that. I've run this before. Globe. Okay, something weird happened there. All right, I, I got my globe. All right, so I know that the script sort of works, uh, but I'm gonna position the, the plot uh, in the center of my paper. But the paper here is whatever the dimension of this 360 um, layout is gonna be. So if I run this again, this is my computer not liking to open things. Sorry about that. All right. I get something like that. So if you try the same script that I did, you should get something like this. This is one frame in a movie. This is frame 55, counting at zero, in the movie I'm gonna make. 
So now I think we can try to make, make the movie. I'm gonna copy, oops, this uh, comments. Remember, these are just comments that I place inside the main script that actually is driving the movie. So now instead of making just the 55th plot, I'm gonna make an MP4 movie, All right? So this should now run this script here uh, 91 times. Oops, what happened here? here we go. Sorry, I'm not happy about this VCS MP4. This should now run the script 91 times, create 91 PNGs, assemble them into an MP4 movie. But it will take a few seconds to, to run all those jobs. Okay, it's done. So it can't be shown in that editor, but I can open it with uh, open globe.mp4. And there is my little movie playing. Can you see the movie? Yes, I can. Yeah, okay, very good. All right, so that was pretty easy. Made a little movie there. And all I did was to write, I started with a simple GMT script, thinking of a piece of paper, and I picked a particular longitude to just sort of make that plot. And then once I had a plot that looked sort of what I wanted, I said, okay, this particular part of the plot, which specifies the central longitude, I want to make that a function of time. So I replaced it with, in this case, movie frame, and let movie take this plot, this, this script, and run it automatically in the background for all these different frames, and then assemble all the frames uh, together to uh, a single single movie. If you look in your directory, if you run this thing, there will be a directory called globe, and it has all these 91 figures, right? Because I didn't say delete them when you're done, because you know, maybe something went wrong with making the movie. I don't want to redo the whole work. So it is still there. We're gonna uh, try another little wrinkle here. Uh, there's my movie script. Uh, we want to have some sense of progress. You know, so there's different progress bars in GMT. Um, you can do, uh, you can number in the frames, you can number the elapsed time. Um, you can have a little indicator that shows how much of the movie has uh, progressed. And I'm gonna put on PA, which is one of, six, I believe, um, indicators of progress. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna add a minus Z option. And what that does when I run this command is to delete the directory with the temporary PNG files, because otherwise it will refuse to overwrite them. So I'm gonna remove the one I had, which is globe, just so that it is gone. And then when I copy and paste this command with the Z, I added the PA. It's going to add a progress indicator. And if I play the movie now, you'll see up in the top right corner, there's a little indicator that shows you know, how long the movie has played. Pretty simple. There's six of these things, and you can position them just like you do a color bar. You know, one of those nine special points on the paper with the minus with the justification. And you can, of course, you can change colors and sizes and all that stuff. Uh, but that's that's a straightforward one. Uh, we can also add a frame label, frame number, with the minus L option. The L option can be complicated. You may want to do setting actual time, you know, month, day, year, that sort of thing, clocks, uh, or just a simple frame counter. I'm going to do the simple frame counter here. And I'll run that. All 
All right, movie's done. And now we should have a little frame counter up in the top left corner. 19, all right. So that's pretty simple. You can have these are built into the movie program with a couple of options. So you can easily uh, have it do that for you. The, uh, the cool thing about um, these options is that right now, oh, I should back up. So right now I was just using the movie frame because that was very convenient. I'm just gonna do one degree change in longitude per frame. And movie frame is an integer obviously, so I can only do one degree at the time here. But what if I wanted a movie that moved you know, 0.2 degrees between frames? Then I couldn't use movie frame. Then I would have to use those other special variables called movie column one, movie column two, and so on. So uh, we're gonna do, let's see here. Well, uh, before I go too far here. No, I think we'll stop there. We can play with this more later. I just want to show you how, how that works. So before I go further here, is there any questions about what you just saw? I try to keep it as simple as I can with a single GMT command here at Coast. But I hope you get the, the question here. The, the key thing here is that you have to use some variables that have to change between each call. And they can either be from a table or they can be just from the frame counter. So um, before we're gonna do breakout and stuff, I'll want to talk about symbols. So you've Sorry, seen- I have one question. Yeah. Very good. I got the MPG MP4 um, video, but I have the question about the quality. Is there yeah. any option that we can increase the quality for the videos that we create by GMT? Absolutely. So right now I did 360p because you know we're live and we don't have much time. <laughs> so this yes. is pretty quick. But I could do a 4K movie and we'll sit there for five minutes and it'll be a beautiful 4K movie that's you know it's that's actually the resolution of my my laptop. But yeah, yeah great. okay. By like that option, we can check it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so the yeah. higher resolution you have, the longer it takes to build each frame. It sort of scales yeah. more linearly, mm -hmm. and the longer the movie is, of course, the more frames you got, then longer it takes. So, I've run movies like the ones I just showed you that took what five, seven, five, six seconds to finish, and mm -hmm. I also run movies that take in a couple of hours or overnight. <laughs> so okay, it's only yeah. in, how many frames. So yeah, that's a good question. Very good. Yes, that's interesting, would... thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna talk about uh, points versus events. So you've seen uh, throughout the last two days, you can plot circles and lines and various symbols on plots with you know, GMT plot, for instance. And you can plot fancier symbols like beach balls with mecha and you put vectors with velo and so on. That's very nice, but in a movie context, what do we want to plot? Let's say we want to do seismicity. If you're going to make a movie of seismicity, you don't want to plot all the seismicity at once. That wouldn't be a very interesting movie. So clearly you want to plot things as they happen, I guess. So if you want to make a movie of, you know, all the seismicity since 1960, in the beginning, you presumably just plot the first quakes in 1960. And then as the frame goes forward, the frame may represent some fixed time increment, like a day or a month or two seconds or whatever. And then you're gonna keep plotting things that have happened in that little interval. And then of course your screen gonna get clogged after a while with all those quakes. So maybe you want some of the quakes that have been on for a while to sort of fade away to not dominate the plot. So that gets kind of tricky in a, in a scripting sense. You know, How do you plot just a portion of it as time changes? So we realized that we need a new tool for this and that's how events was born. It's a tool that only plots the data that should be visible on any given a frame. So you can think of it as, a, as a, a hypercharged plot command that plots things, but it's sort of restrictive. And it can even plot these symbols from Mecca and Coop and Velo as well. So um, I'll just scroll this manually forward. The way it works is that you can imagine each each um, event that you want to plot, let's stick with the um, seismicity because it's sort of easy to understand what an event is there, a quake happens. So prior to the quake happening, the quake should not be plotted, right? It hasn't happened yet. So the green line here is flat line at zero, symbol size is zero. 
until the beginning of the event right here, then the symbol size should be one times whatever symbol size you want. And then it stays for all the frames that follow, perhaps until some time you decide, well, you don't want to see that quake anymore. And it goes back to zero again. So that green step function here, you can imagine one being attached to every single data point as they slide you know, in different time directions. Uh, so you can do that, but you can also spiff it up a little bit by having the simple size change, like the black line here, a little bit before the event. So it sort of builds up to a large simple size and then decay down to sort of announce that, wow, we have a new event. And then maybe it will decay back, not to zero, but some small, smaller size in the end. So we can control the size of symbols through time. We can also use the same thing with similar curves to control the color intensity and even the transparency and even the color. So you can make something very complicated by associating each event with some uh, event curve like this. So we're gonna demonstrate this uh, in a relatively simple example, which is the uh, Pacific seismicity for 2021. So for you to do this, uh, you will need to, okay, so for each frame here, we're gonna specify central longitude, we're going to plot the background coastlines, and then we're going to plot all the events that should be on that uh, time frame. And you know, if that works, we could make it fancy by using a GID image topography background or something. But the first thing is that you need some data for this to work. We're going to get it from USGS, and uh, in on the GitHub page, you'll find a script which you already have downloaded, presumably when you cloned it, called Get Quakes. And I want you to run get quakes in your terminal here. So I have get quakes too, right there. We're not gonna, I commented so you can read it, but basically it's a script that will go to the, to the website and download data and scale it for us without us having to click on web pages, right? Because you know, you may not be there. You just wanna run this thing once in a while and make a movie. So I'm gonna run get quakes.sh. And it does a couple of things. It creates a data set of all of the quakes that happen in 2021, uh, five and larger. And it scales the magnitude by 50 to simulate a certain diameter of a symbol on the earth in kilometers. So that's quakes.txt. I'm also creating a standard red, green, blue seismicity color table. So shallow quakes zero to 70 kilometers can be red 70 to 300 are going to be green and deeper than 300, which is 10,000, which is deeper than the earth, can be blue. And then I'm using GMT map down here to create a data table of longitudes. So basically, I'm, I'm, I'm going from, I think I'm going from 200 to 240 in longitude over the time period of that one year in steps of one day at a time. And that's the times.txt file. So with those little bits, uh, I'm ready to try to make uh, my Earth movie. And in the interest of time, I think I have one here. No, that's not the one. Uh, where's my other one? Quakes, quakes.sh. So I'm doing exactly the same thing that I did for the globe. I'm writing a little GMT script that you can see here, right? The GMT begin, GMT end show. It has a coast. And the coast just looks like the same movie before. Here's the globe, right? It's a coast command, colors, minus J, minus R. Uh, same thing, minus R, minus J, G. But now I'm using movie column one. And movie column one is going to be the second column in my data file times.txt that I made. So times.txt looks like this. It was created by the script. It has dates there every day. And then it has a longitude that goes from 160 to 200, I think, to 240 linearly. That's my, my script. Um, so that's going to be the same kind of map you just saw. But then I'm going to run GMT events. That's going to plot the earthquakes with colors given by the CPT. 
I'm going to plot them on the 3D surface of the Earth as ellipses of a certain dimension given by the magnitude. And then I am attaching these curves to each event to scale the size and the transparency and the intensity of the color. So it will take me a little bit too long, I think, to explain the parameters. These are you know, specified in the man page uh, for you know, how long the event should be up before it sort of fades back down, how, how big should the initial symbol look like, and what's the change in color over time, and so on. So that's what these options to events does. And then I have, again, commented out a whole bunch of examples here. So I'm going to try one of these, and you can try with me if you have the you have the access to the files there. You save the typing for now. So I'm going to copy the first one here, which um, going to just make no movie. But it's going to make a plot of one frame. It's going to be frame number fifty. So if all have gone well with the getting the data, this should run, and it did. So this is one frame in the movie at frame 55. That happens to be February 20th of last year. And at that particular day, you can see one, two, three, five, six large symbols. These are quakes that are just happening around this time. So they're sort of blowing up in your face. And then quakes that have happened just a few days earlier have sort of subsided back down to an intermediate size. And then quakes that happen in January, they're just dark and very small in the background. So this, this worked well. So what I would do if I compose this kind of movie, I would make just a plot like this, just one particular PDF frame, PDF because it's higher resolution, and tinker with my parameters here in minus E and minus M until it looks about right. Um, well then, then I will do the same thing, but with uh, a PNG frame, because I'm still doing 360. So I'll just see how rotten it look at that small. Oh, and the Mac doesn't like to open something automatically, does it? It's, now it's, okay. Sorry, open quakes.png. All right, I have to fight my Mac here for a second. Um, it's very easy. Force quit preview. Yes, I want to force quit preview. Open quakes. There it is. Okay, so that's that's one frame in my movie. It it's okay. It's small, but you know. It's quick. So now I can run uh, the same movie, but I do not need to see that frame anymore. I'll take out the minus M option. And instead of none, which is not needed, I'm going to say MP4. So that means make MP4 movie. Um, LC0 means label the zeroth column in the data, which is the time, and turn off the clock, just do the date. All right, I'll run that. Again, look at the, the plot here. It's just two lines, right? Lay down the coastline and then plot stuff on top. The rest is all happening by the movie program who is you know, doing these, uh, how many are there? Hundreds. 100 frames, there is done, okay. So now I can open quakes.mp4. And it's a small movie, um, starts on January 1st, and I can play it. And you can see what I mean by popping up and showing that the earthquake arrived and then they sort of decay back into the background. And this is, these are all the quakes that happened last year, but they only see it from the Pacific side. All right, so it's going to go up to the New Year's Eve, and there was a big quake up in Alaska, and one near the North Pole, apparently. <laughs> That's interesting. All right, so, and you can see the, the date comes up in the top left corner here, because I didn't plot the clock, 
could plot the clock also, or just the clock, depending on you know what we're doing here. But um, that's uh, where we are. So we only have a few more minutes here. So I think we have, no, that's not right. We have what, half an hour, is that right? On my clock? My clock is coming up on eight. So I think we have plenty of time for breakouts. Um, let's see if I covered everything I want to cover. Yes, I did. So in the breakout rooms, I think you can do the following things. You can play with either one of these two scripts. For instance, you can do the first one and just try to increase the resolution. So let's say if I go back to my, my globe here and I say, well, you know, that was very nice, but it was really crummy resolution. How about I'm, I'm HD already set there? I'm going to make an HD movie. All right. How long did that take? Five seconds, 10 seconds. Oh, it's done. Okay. Open globe MP4. Right. Now we're talking. Look at those beautiful tomato colors in the ocean. Right. So here we go. So now it's HD. 1080, 1920 by 1080, right? I didn't take too long because the plot is super simple. Um, I could do the same thing with my quakes, but that's how many frames do I have here? I've got to count times that TXT. 365, oh, duh, it was one per day, wasn't it? So 365 frames. Um, yeah, so maybe it'll take three, four times as long. Um, but you can play with this. So you can see the minus C option here uh, controls how what's the what's the resolution of the plot. How do we know what's available? GMT docs movie minus C canvas. All right. Here's preset formats. You know, you can do 8K. <laughs> if you have a, a way to display 8K, you can. It doesn't matter. 4K ultra high definition or HD 1080p equivalent. And then it goes down and then similar things for, you know, XGA and SVGA and DVD formats down here. But you can also do a custom one. So if you want to make a plot that is, you know, uh, three inches by three inches, a square thing at 200 dots per inch, you can specify that uh, as well by width X height X dots per unit. So you can make your custom funny portrait film if you want, which is maybe handy for you know a PowerPoint presentation uh, where you don't really want the whole screen because you're just showing a portion of it. And maybe you're showing something that works better in portraits. You make a portrait movie. Um, go back to my slides here to see if I, oh boy, there. Right, so, uh, okay, I'll go back to my scripts actually, so I'm talking from the script. So you can either play with the first one and change the colors and change, you know, the type of plot, uh, the size of things, maybe put two spinning earths in there if you want to be sort of risque. Um, or you can play with the earthquake data set and change some of these parameters here. What happened if you change this five to two you know, that's going to change the initial burst of activity, how small or big they are. This coda here, that says after the quake is sort of done its thing, shrink it down to half its size. That's what the coda does here. You can change that number. This one here for MI is the color intensity. It, it doesn't change anything. It's at one, but during coda, after we sort of turn it off, it changes the color intensity down to minus 0. 0.6. That's going to darken things. It's like being in the shade. And, and so on. So uh, you can play with these parameters and you can change the resolutions. And I think um, that's a good sort of way to get a feel for how movie making does. Because if you change this thing too much, you're making a four, don't make a 4K movie during this work breakout room. It will take too long, but you can probably, depending on the computer, I mean, you saw mine did the HD in just 10, 15 seconds. Depends on your computer. I happen to have 20 cores. You know, so that means 20 jobs are running simultaneously, making 20 frames at the time. It goes quicker that way, right? And it's all assembled at the end. All right, so I think we should uh, do the breakout rooms now. I'm going to stop my share.
we should do the breakout rooms and it's sort of anything goes in the breakout rooms you can start with those examples and explore some of the parameters to see how it affects your movie um, and if you're excited about making movies you can start thinking overnight and you sleep what kind of movie would be cool to display the science you're doing because maybe you picked that as a project instead of a, a static figure for a paper okay so um can we set up the breakout rooms uh, main room everybody um well i had fun i don't know what you guys did in the other rooms <laughs> i had fun messing around with movies um so it's the end of the day uh we are sort of gone through all the things we wanted to show you over these two days um and tomorrow we're going to put that to good use in making your project so you can spend the night thinking about what your project will be uh the the, the bare minimum i would say is a sort of professional looking figure one in a thesis that shows your data and you know what you're trying to accomplish uh with the tools you've seen uh, it shouldn't be a copy and paste uh pay, uh paste of anything we did directly we we will you know expect more of you uh but you should be able to do something nice and of course the whole point is that this is a figure that you actually will need to make for your paper or thesis or something so this is going to help you to make that figure so you should put some effort into this thing here it doesn't have to be done by the end of the day it can be a few days later but it shouldn't be a month later because you know we're not going to wait around and grade things in a month from now uh or you can make a movie i think that's also okay and acceptable so you can dream of, dream about that tonight and then when we meet tomorrow we'll talk about the project and we will get you started and then we'll you know we'll be available for you uh that's sort of the morning session right and then there's an optional afternoon session where we're going to demonstrate some of these wrappers. And I think the uh, plan is for me to demonstrate the oldest one, which is the MATLAB wrapper, which is got, getting a little dated now. I think it's only going to really do uh, classic mode GMT, as far as I've been playing with, but we'll see. And then Joachim's going to do the Julia, and I think Max going to do the Pi GMT to give you a little a flavor for how those other environments can use GMT without leaving that environment. Um, and I think that's all I got to say, right? Uh, did I leave anything out, Max, Federico, Joachim, Eric? Yep. Just so people are aware, uh, we'll have, uh, we'll review the final submissions by creating a final products channel in Slack and you'll put the output from your uh, GMT script there. And if you do create a movie, we'll ask you just to output one frame rather than uploading the entire movie to Slack. Yes, yeah, that's a good point. We don't want the, the two gigabyte uh, long version <laughs> clogging the Slack. Yeah, thanks for that. That's uh, I forgot to say that. We'll, we'll repeat that tomorrow, I think, and uh, make sure everybody knows what they're going to do and when they have to do it. All right, with that, I think it is uh, bedtime, breakfast, lunch, dinner for everybody. And we'll see you same time tomorrow uh, at 1430 UTC, I believe. Take care.